I'm most honored and privileged to be part of this opening session of the third All Africa Religious Liberty and Congress. As you can see, I'm feeling unwell. I have many colleagues that I should have delegated, but the importance of this gathering has really pushed me to the wall. First and foremost, on behalf of the government of Rwanda, I want to extend warm welcome to all participants who traveled to Kigali. Please feel at home and enjoy the land of a thousand hills. I also cordially thank the organizers of this Congress for choosing Rwanda to host it. This affirms the commitment of the government of Rwanda to respect and promote the freedom of religion. Distinguished participants, let me begin by highlighting that the foundation of any successful people is grounded in a sovereign state in which citizens in their diversity enjoy and exercise their cultural, social, economic, religious, and political rights. As you may recall, Rwandans strongly related to the pains caused by discrimination and extremism that culminated into the genocide against Tutsi, which claimed lives of over a million innocents. After 1994, the world could not believe that Rwandans could again live together. Mm. However, thanks to the visionary leadership, we chose to stay together instead of division. We chose, <laughs> we chose consensual democracy instead of confrontation. In the last 24 years, the government of Rwanda has proposed to create a political, social, economic fabric that would bring Rwandans together as one people to build a reconciled, democratic, and prosperous nation. The people of Rwanda have therefore chosen to be guided by the principle of accepting our diversity as a powerful basis of mobilizing and utilizing our citizens. The new politics of Rwanda therefore is based on harnessing the diversity of our people. I want to emphasize that in Rwanda a tolerant and peaceful environment to worship and practice religion is granted by our constitution. <laughs> the government of Rwanda values the contribution of faith-based organizations in socioeconomic reconstruction of the country. Today, Faith-based organizations are considered as a strong partner of the government in socio-economic development matters. 
distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Generally speaking, the world communities have also accepted and embraced their diversity as well. It is no wonder that today the world boosts of millions of religious denominations and organizations. A significant number of countries that are founded of particular religious belief and practices. But unfortunately, some conflicts across the globe are committed in the name of religion, fueled by a rigid and fundamentalists who believe are justified in using violence to impose extreme and radical attitudes. Pope Francis once remarked that religious religions must never lend support to or approve of conflicts and disagreements. He warned that God cannot be used for personal interests and selfish ends and cannot be used to justify any form of fundamentalism, imperialism, or colonialism. It is regrettable to note that the world has suffered deadly atrocities caused by lack of tolerance for diversity attacking people on the basis of their region, among others. Today, such conflicts persist on the African continent as well. Religions should take a center stage in, help us, in helping us understand that the center of each person is outside himself and the belief that we are oriented toward the most high and towards the other who is our neighbor. The theme of the Congress, religious religion, hope for building a tolerant and peaceful continent is therefore timely and worth to ponder about. Nevertheless, as we deliberate on this theme, be aware that those who promote divisions, tensions, and profit from conflicts do not appreciate the fraternity and sharing that we seek to increase. It is therefore important for Africans to come together in such a forum to reflect about diversity and tolerance, which are paramount in achieving a united, peaceful, prosperous Africa as charted in Africa Agenda 2063. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, I wish all of you a productive Congress and encourage you all to conduct fruitful deliberations that shall bear the seeds of peace and harmony among African communities and African nations. With this note, I declare the third All-African Religious Liberty Congress and Festival officially opened.
I thank you very much and God bless you.